there was this sermon. I don't know what's going on. Um, sorry. What I'm going to say, what I'm saying is, um, obviously it's better to have the truth. And obviously Catholicism is closer to the truth than Protestantism. But there are some versions of Protestantism that backload works. And there are Protestant denominations who mis purposely misunderstand Mormons, Latter-day Saints, Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever. And then they attack those straw man, and it brings them closer to the Lord, and it works, and they get to heaven. And I just want to keep encouraging them. I don't want to be the guy who changes their footwork. And now they're like, oh, crap, I guess I have to be Catholic, because now I know the truth. And they don't have the joy that they did uh, being a gesture or a clown. Sometimes I just feel like we should just leave them as clowns, leave them as gestures. Because the, 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 the root of Catholicism is, is not that important. The fruit of Catholicism is supposed to be a relationship with Jesus and holiness. And with Protestantism, the root is very demonic and it's it's built in lies. But for some people, as they, I guess, drink the cup of Protestantism, the fruit is a love for Jesus. Um, and to remove the root, sometimes uh, it can hurt the relationship with the Lord. I know some people that they have a, they have a little relationship with the Bible, they have a little relationship with God, and then... They think, but they think the Bible's perfect, and then they find out the Bible isn't perfect, and they throw Jesus away with them. But yeah, I know there's, um, you know, there's. I tell God all the time, there's, there's things that God knows that I don't, and I never want to know it, and I want to be in ignorance throughout the eternities. Um, for example, I do not. How should I say this? I would not want to ask God. Wow. Anyways, let's continue. And by the way, uh, usually when I talk here on the internet, I am 100% sure with everything that I'm saying. But most of what that I said in this video, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but the Lord did want me to say that, the, that story at the very least. But how you interpret it, you have to, you have to weigh the skills. If, if, the, if the truth completely robs someone of their joy and their happiness and their whatever... Um, Anyways. Or maybe the reason why I want the Lord wanted me to bring up the story is because um, I did the right thing. I mean, a bunch of Bible verses are popping into my head right now. I mean, certainly Matthew 7, 3 to 5 comes to mind. If someone has a plank of mowed speck in the beam in the eyes, like you remove it, right? Proverbs 20, verse 23... It says a man has more respect for you when you rebuke them than when you flatter them with the tongue. Wow. Proverbs 27, 5, open rebuke is better than love and secret. What do you guys think? Should we tell the Protestants that they're wrong? Um, if, if you knew that someone's relationship with Jesus would be temporarily hurt by the truth, would you hit them with the truth anyway? I think we might. I think we might have to. I mean, is truth on the throne of thrones? Or is it goodness? And listen, like, if the truth drives you away from Jesus, it's like maybe you had the wrong God altogether. I, I, I'm rethinking this whole, this whole situation. But I still stand by the exact literal 
like 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 the literal thing. Um, the the girl threw a strike. She was happy. She only has a couple more shots for her entire life. Uh, throwing it off the wrong, throwing it off the wrong, throwing it off the right foot's not gonna help. And casual bowling is more about being happy. Um. And anyways, let's continue. In response, specifically to a comment that said they are alive in heaven with God, from a previous comment that I made on a different video, um, I'm basically asking, so why do you, what, what theological, what biblical reason do you have at all to pray to dead people? And the response was not a Bible verse. The, the response was not um, any kind of theological reason for why it's okay to pray to dead people. The response was, well, they're not really dead. And to me, that seems very weird and kind of dishonest. And, and so I'm, I'm instead going to very honestly break down both sides of the argument, the Protestant side and the Catholic side, and go over every main argument that I got in response to this video, which kind of, the comment section blew up on Instagram. Yeah, <sighs> and here's the other thing. Is trying to pretend that. like uh, Catholics don't I make a distinction or don't understand the distinction between earthly physical death but and being spiritually doesn't. alive. Here's the thing with the Catholic Church. There's people in that church who are more righteous than me, who are closer to God than me. Just look at Trent Horn. Look at Michael Knowles. Look at, um, even this guy, Catholicism, wow, but I mean, look at Bishop Barron. Or something. Just, just talk to them back and forth, back and forth. Listen to them. Are these guys just stupid? Do these guys just not know God at all? Like, isn't it amazing that people who are smarter than you and more righteous than you find morally sufficient reasons to be Catholic? Now, if you, um, if you, for example, I don't know. If you don't want to believe something, and you could you could choose to do that, because 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 there's people in other religions too, um, that are smarter than me, more righteous than me, closer to God than me, and I think they're wrong about stuff, but I'm not going to sit here and say that they don't have morally sufficient reasons and intellectually sufficient reasons to believe that stuff, and with God all things are possible, and we're under the premise that God exists. So what part of the doctrine is God not able to pull off? Right? And then and then you say, oh, well, I just don't like their reason, this and this and that. And, um, but yeah, are you really going to, anyways, I, I, I just want to, I just want to throw out, you know, some humility. You can say you don't agree. Just don't say they're stupid. Because that's ridiculous. The Catholics are stupid, really. You know, I, I, I think a better... Anyways, I, I just... Anyways. And like, and if you want to say the Catholic Church is demonic, <clears throat> that's a brutal worldview. That it's like Satan uh, with the puppet strings at the top and God's just letting the... Like, my thing is, all churches are of God and of the devil at the same time. They both, there's no church that is just completely uh, free from, from the devil attacking it. In my opinion, it's kind of like a dynamic, the sin kind of lets the devil in and, you know. But doctrinally, um, I mean, I guess, <sighs> I guess you could say doctrines of demons. But, uh... But what makes you smart enough to know it's a doctrine of demons when the people that are smarter than you and more righteous than you, um... You know. They think it's not. I just think it's interesting. Like, like I spend a lot of my time bashing free gracers because they, they, cause they're, they, they don't know God as well as me. They aren't as righteous as me. They aren't as smart as me, you know? So it makes sense to bash that religion because it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of wicked idiots. 
But I, I gotta, I'm gonna say I gotta be careful bashing the righteous smart people, because <laughs> uh, I've I've reached the level of smarts, I've reached the level of wisdom, I've reached the level of righteousness, not to rebuke smarter righteous people than me, unless I'm 100 percent sure, and I'm not dumb enough to ever be 100 percent sure about stuff like that. I have a video bashing Isaiah Saldivar for bashing Catholics. That makes sense. He's, um, anyways, let's continue. No Catholic ever made that argument to this you. This is what happened You made that up all by yourself. And you're mocking a cardboard construction that doesn't really exist. You're, you're mocking a movie prop of an argument that you made yourself, that, that nobody ever gave to you. Beyond that, um, you're also not acknowledging that while physical death, while earthly bodily death is real, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It only matters to those of us that are left behind on earth that now have to grieve for that lost loved one or that lost person. But in the great scheme of things, it doesn't matter because Christ conquered death. Did Christ not conquer death? If Christ conquered death, then, then physical earthly death is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. What matters is the state of your spiritual soul, the state of your immortal soul. Is it dead and in hell? Or is it alive and with God in heaven? And you know this. You know this is the argument that Catholics are making. And yet you're choosing to be dismissive, to be condescending. I mean, Been there, I really that. wish that I, I can exactly return to you, you the energy that you're putting out. But the Holy Spirit won't let me. And like, I think it's there are really, reasons, uh, it's, why it's never worth it to wrong. overpower the, the Holy Spirit with the flesh. And we're going to talk about that, but the main argument I that I covered this in this particular video it, was... And then it leaves you dry. You know? So that's good that he held back. That praying to dead people is wrong. Or specifically, if it actually was a question, it was why do you pray to dead people? And the answer is they're not dead. <laughs> but, but that implies an argument. And the argument is praying to dead people is wrong. And so let's go over that. The th I think every response, uh, especially to that particular question, although we're going to be uh, getting into more broad Catholic theology versus Protestant theology in this video from a biblical perspective and can compare both sides to what the Bible actually has to say. Um, but it, specifically in regards to this one argument uh, about praying to saints, um, and I'm going to do my best to uh, honestly represent the Catholic side. So I know a lot of Catholics don't even like me saying praying to dead people, um, but I am going to clarify what I mean by that and give, give the Catholics a shot as well at clarifying their point because they are the ones commenting. And I will show you all the, the main comments for the different arguments that I got. Uh, so the responses I have noticed for re rebuking the idea that Catholics pray to dead people is wrong uh, is broken up into three categories. So when we say praying to dead people is wrong, the rebuttal is in one of three categories and it's they're not dead. So praying to dead people is not wrong because they're not actually dead is one of the avenues I think the responses can go in. The second avenue is that you're not actually praying because we know that prayer is something that is specifically uh, supposed to be directed towards God. And so what you're doing isn't praying, you're just asking. And so therefore it's okay. So they're not dead or it's not praying. Yeah, or like the third thing that. is to just deny the entire premise, which is it's not actually wrong to pray to dead people. It's completely okay. You really are praying and they really are dead. And that's I, okay. I that is acceptable and it is uh, a godly and righteous thing to do. All right. Refute all those. So, depending on your definitions, but ten, but depending on how you define certain terms, both of those first avenues are completely acceptable explanations for praying to the saints. The first one, they're not dead. Okay, if you're speaking of spiritual life and spiritual death, which theologically is the only definition that matters, right? Because we've already established that Christ conquered death. Christ conquered not biological death because we still biologically die, but biological death is irrelevant because Christ conquered the entire idea of death. So to say the saints are alive, they're alive in Christ, is biblical, it's true, and it's perfectly acceptable. Now, to say the second avenue, well, it's not praying. We're merely asking or petitioning. Again, depending on your definition of terms, is 100% acceptable. Because if you decide, if you define prayer as part of worship, as something only given to God, then of course the, the Catholics would say, no, we don't, uh, we don't affirm that. However, you have to understand that the definition of prayer as being something directed specifically at God or an object of worship is a very new wow. and very recent use of that word. I, so I, I don't know even as far back as 70 years ago, 100 years ago, that's not how that term was used um, exclusively. Most videos right? I watch. I so uh, archaically, eh, I, the word I mean, pray did simply mean to ask. I, I don't always learn from videos, put it like that. Or to petition. If you look at the King James Version of the Bible, in 1 Samuel 15, verse 25, it says, Now therefore, and then Sam, uh, Saul is speaking to Samuel, who is the king, who is currently the king of Israel. And Saul says to Samuel, Now therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. Now, if you look at the Hebrew word that's used in the original Hebrew language scriptures, that word is nay. And that word translates to please, to, you know, literally please. So when he says, I pray thee, turn with me, or I pray thee, pardon my sin, he's saying, please forgive me. Please forgive me for what I've done wrong to you. 
Now, if we look at Luke 14, verse 19, in the King James Version of the Bible again, it says, And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And if you look at the Greek, the original language the New Testament was written in, if you look at the Greek, the word there is eroto, which literally translates to I beg of. And then there would be a subject. I beg of you which is how it's being used in Luke. And those words, those this literal words, are how modern Bibles translate those passages. I beg of you. Because the word pray has changed its meaning. This is why it's not wise for people to read the King James Version of the Bible if they're not really well versed in archaic meanings of words, how they were used during the Elizabethan period. This is also why Shakespeare is so confusing to high school kids. High uh. school kids don't know what these old words mean. They don't know what, they, they don't know what these, these words that we use today differently than how they were used in Elizabethan times. They don't know the difference. It's like in Romeo and Juliet, in the famous balcony scene. Ro uh, Juliet goes out to the balcony, and Romeo is down beneath, but she doesn't know he's there. He's stalking her. Juliet does not know that Romeo is down below, and a lot of people even get this confused, because visually, Juliet is on the balcony on the stage, and Romeo is down below the balcony on the stage, and a lot of people confuse them as having a conversation. They're not. They're having separate internal monologues that they're, they're saying out loud. They're having separate monologues. And so Juliet comes out to the balcony, and she's not talking to Romeo. She says, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or, if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I will no longer be a Capulet. Now, what is she saying? Most people think that she's looking for Romeo because he's right there. That she comes out to the balcony looking for him, but she doesn't know he's there. Wherefore, in the archaic uh, English language, did not mean, like, where are you? She was not seeking for a location. She was seeking an answer. Wherefore means why. Why are you Romeo? Why are you a Montague? Why do you have to be who you are? But if you don't understand, you're going to think she's looking for him. And it's the same thing with the word pray. There you go. When Catholics say we pray Ask to them, the saints or we pray of the saints, all we're saying, all we're saying is that we are making a petition of these saints. And as I, as I showed in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, there's nothing wrong with that. We're supposed to do that. And because also, there's no other way for them to take our petitions to Christ unless we give them What if to I them. told you? Now, because that is an archaic usage of the word, and because the word pray has God changed, may have, it's may usage. let them do it. You know, God may... Um, God say, hey, you can you can pray to Mary. You know, what if he just lets you do it? I think that's interesting, but you know, it, it's it's kind of like, uh, well, I'm not gonna use that analogy. Right. Catholics now are being encouraged to shy away from saying we pray to the saints and right. saying rather we pray through the saints. We pray through the saints to God. Because in the modern usage, prayer is, prayer is something given only to an object of worship. So that's fine. If you want to define prayer as being only given to an object of worship, then we don't pray to the saints. We pray through them. We ask them to pray to God for us. And it's no different, no different than asking a friend on earth to pray for you. The only difference is location. You can't say, well, my friend Billy is alive. The saints are alive. You can't say, well, my friend Billy can hear me when I speak to him. We have all the evidence in the world he that the saints can hear us. Not through their own power. Not because they're omnipotent or omniscient or omnipresent, but because, because God allows them to be. God allows them to hear our prayers. And they have to. This is by good and necessary consequence. Because if they give our petitions to Christ, as the Bible clearly says that they do, then they have to be able to hear us. And we also know from the martyrs that are crying out for vengeance that the dead do know, the saints do know what's going on on earth. Now, to the last avenue. If you acknowledge that the saints are, are in heaven, if... if uh, if you acknowledge that the, that the saints are dead, let's say, okay, the saints are dead, they cannot hear us. If you acknowledge that, and you acknowledge that prayer is something given only to an object of worship, and you decide anyway that there's nothing wrong with that, then you're in the wrong. That, that's it. You're just in the wrong. Because we do not worship the saints. We don't give them offerings. We don't make sacrifices unto them. And if you, des if you define prayer as something given only to an object of worship, then we do not pray to them. We pray through them. So notice, um, in arguments like this, just an interesting observation is praying to dead people is wrong. Um, you, you have to break that down into sections. And you can, uh, really, there's, there's three possible, like I, like I said, three possible issues that you can have with that statement. Praying to dead people is wrong. You can either deny the praying part, you can either deny the dead people part, or you can either deny the wrong part. And so I'm going to cover these arguments from real Catholics in my real comment section and respond to those. But first, I want to give a basic uh, Protestant argument, and uh, forget Protestantism, I'm going to give a biblical argument against praying to the dead. And again, if you happen to be a Catholic listening to this video, hey, thanks for making it six minutes into the video. I really appreciate it. But, um, like I said, I'm going to clarify, and I'm going to give the Catholics in my comment section a chance. Um, and actually go to your own documents, your own church fathers and your own people um, to, to define words and, and to talk about you know, the truth of this. But my argument against you praying to whatever you want to call them, says, I'm not dead saints, saints in heaven, um, whatever, a lot of people actually are like, so you, you don't think heaven exists? And obviously, that, that's not what I'm saying. In the video itself, I said, obviously, we know that saints are in heaven. God does save people. There is a heaven. John 931. 
John 9 31 says God does not listen to sinners, but to the righteous man who does his will. And there's been maybe times in my life where I'm not quite there. You know what I'm saying? And especially after knowing that verse, it can sometimes be hard to pray if I'm in a if I'm not in a state of grace and firing off a prayer. Uh, firing off a prayer request to a saint in heaven seems like pretty strong because the saint in heaven will look at you in a way that's a little bit more normal than the pure divine way of God and they could leverage their love for God the leverage their love that God has for them to get God to bless you. Whereas if you go straight to God, he just says, ugh. And, no, and, you know, back in the day, I used to, oh, yeah, God always hears your prayers. Proverbs 28, 9 says, he who shuts his ears to the preaching of the law, even his prayers shall be abomination. James 4, 3 says, if you don't have good motives, God will not hear your prayers. Second Peter, if you're in a fight with your wife, God will not hear your prayers. Um, James 1 6 without great faith God will not hear your prayers so I just think it's an interesting religion how you can kind of get around a lot of that by having I, and, and you know regular Christians or whatever you can get you can get people to pray for you but I just think this is kind of a cool thing it's called holy envy and then you got a guy to the left. Not only does he not think this is amazing, he thinks it's heaven exists. And okay. people really do go there who are saved. And so I'm not denying that heaven exists. Heaven. I'm not denying that people are in heaven who are saved. I am denying. <laughs> it's just this is this is that like and, and not only it's like this is so wicked that I need to make a video, and it's like it's like the most wicked thing I could find. Too. It's it's it, the whole thing is ridiculous. I'm with the Catholics on this one for sure. That we either have the ability to or the instruction to either speak to them or pray to them. I think even trying to speak to dead people is wrong. So regardless of if you call it praying or not, um, my actual argument against prayer to dead people is I would say, I, like, I, I can make it actually much, much more general. And so I don't have to argue that praying to dead people is wrong. I think biblically we can make a very powerful case uh -oh. that not only praying to dead people is wrong, but praying to anyone aside from God is wrong. And speaking to dead people is wrong. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 13. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is well that we are here. If you wish, I will make three booths here, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking, when behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces, and were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision, until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And the disciples asked him, Then why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? He replied, Elijah does come, and he is to restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and they did not know him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also the Son of Man will suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist, the Gospel of the Lord. So if speaking to the departed, those who are no longer on earth, is inherently wrong, then it must follow from that that Jesus was sinful, because Jesus spoke to Moses and Elijah, who had departed. Moses died an earthly death, a biological death, which is recounted at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, and Elijah was assumed bodily into heaven. This actually might actually even be biblical evidence that Moses was assumed bodily into heaven after his natural death. But that doesn't, that, that, that's irrelevant to the point. The point is Jesus spoke to people who were departed. Jesus spoke to people who were no longer on the earth and had not been for a very long time, centuries. So if even speaking to what you refer to as the dead is wrong, then Jesus was all kinds of wrong here. And you notice that the disciples never once questioned it. The disciples never once said, Lord, why are you talking to dead people? It wasn't a foreign thing to them. When Jesus was dying on the cross, he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is Aramaic, and it means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But when he said this, the people who were down on the ground beneath the cross started to mock him because they thought he was crying out for Elijah. Not that it was uncommon to call out for a saint. They mocked him because they thought he was calling out to Elijah to save him. The biblical roots of all of these things are there. You just have to be willing to see them. And you have to stop mocking arguments that are, are too intellectual for you to understand and actually try to engage with them or try to understand them. So 
the biblical argument, or, or you know, trying to speak to dead people, because the question is, can can they hear you? And so if you believe you can speak to dead people and you attempt to, there's definitely not a good way to go about that. Sure there is, through private prayer. Or if you still want to stick with the definition of prayer, that it's something that is only possible uh, to be directed towards an object of worship, such as God. So if you don't want to use that particular word, then private conversation. No mediums involved, no conjuring involved, no witchcraft involved. It's just you saying, St. Joseph, pray for me. That's all. That's all. Um, and, and look, there are, there are counter arguments. Like I said, the Catholics give a response to this, and I will actually go over those because, hey, there are examples in the Bible of certain people talking to dead people. And so we're, we're going to go over every one of those. So the common arguments uh, against praying to the dead, the biblical arguments, one, like I said previously, because praying to anyone or anything aside from God alone is wrong. And I will talk about the pushback from that from the Catholic side. Uh, another reason that praying to the dead is wrong is because communing with the dead, or in other words, asking dead people to do things to for you, including taking your prayers to God. Like if you ask someone, a, a dead person, to say, hey, just like someone who's alive, hey, can you pray for me for this? If you ask a dead person to do that, there's something different about being dead versus being alive scripturally. And you know, if, we, if you've ever been to a funeral, uh, you know what the difference between a dead person and a living person is. And so trying to commune with those people, trying to ask those people to do things for you, is what the Bible calls necromancy. And that is a grievous, grievous sin, and cannot be godly in any way. Asking dead people to do things for you, not good. Merriam-Webster defines uh, necromancy as, they have two definitions here, conjuration, and it uh, directs us to go see the definition of the word conjure since 2A, so definition 2A, which we will look at in a minute. Conjuration of the spirits of the dead this for purposes of magically revealing the future or influencing the course of events. But you guys get the, and the idea. second definition I mean, is magic or sorcery. And if we go to the definition of the word conjure and look at definition 2A, point. to summon by or as if by <laughs> invocation or incantation. Uh, so there you go, there you have it. That is what necromancy means. We don't do that. We don't conjure the, the saints. We don't summon them. We don't seek information from them. If you use a Ouija board, to try uh, and contact St. Peter, Catholic. first of all, if it works at all, you're going to be contacting a demon, Pray not St. Peter. Would, uh, continue to grow in grace, help him repent of sports, and to think about Jesus every second of every day. Um, Lord, I pray for the Protestant. Bring him some truth and some light. Help him unlist his videos that are bashing Catholics. And to humble him so that he knows that there are uh, not just gods bigger than him, but, <laughs> you know religions better than him too <laughs> oh lord i pray for uh truth for myself as i truth seek throughout this world there are so many beautiful churches beautiful religions uh beautiful so many beautiful things amazing amazing um youtube channels and videos and lord i just pray that i pray selfishly to be closer to you but also selfless for the other, these are the two people in the video, and all the listeners who are potentially listening to this, that they'd be closer to Jesus as well. Say, Jesus Christ, man.